Hey, welcome back, Jonathan here. And in the last video, I gave you the task at the end of the video of just adjusting your advanced laser defender game, adjusting some of the values and balancing it out and doing some general bug fixing. Uh, I'm taking it a little bit farther now. I noticed there are there are some bugs to be fixed that have either been overlooked. Maybe you have some different ones. Uh, so, I, but I also want to do some general cleaning up and making things look a little bit nicer. So this is what I've done in this video, or this is what I've done prior to creating this video, rather. And I'm just going to take you through it uh, briefly to to help you clean up your game a little bit too. So we'll get on to the final part of making this series in the next video, but for now, let's just make sure our game is at a good place before we finalize things. So number one, a general cleanup of the console. What do I mean by this? Well, I can't really show you anymore, but if you play your game and you haven't already done this, you'll notice when you're playing, you're, you'll be getting a lot of different debug.log and print statements here in the console. And that was fine for when the game was being developed and we were debugging and playtesting, but a lot of that stuff we know is already working now. And some of that is, the, is print statements I added, and then some of that is stuff that was added in the Udemy course. So when you're going through here and you're debugging, uh, if you see things that are coming up, and again, I, I'm not, you're not going to see that on mine because I've already taken care of a lot of that, but if you see things coming up, if you just double click on them, that particular line, it will open Mono Develop and it'll take you right to that line of code where that debug or print statement is located, and then you can just delete that directly in your code. So if you don't think you need it anymore, just go ahead and get rid of that, uh, just to clean up and make things tidy so you can use debug and print statements for what you actually need them for. Uh, so number two, this was a big one. I noticed the lose screen was not loading when the player dies. And I, I did fix this already, but I'm just, I, I reverted it so you can see what I mean. So I noticed right now, uh, if the player dies, you're supposed to go to the lose screen after three seconds, but it just kind of sits there infinitely. And I had to take a look at this and figure out why was this happening? What was the problem here? And uh, I, well, here, here's what I came up with. So if we go into our player controller script and we take a look at where the player is dying, where is it? Here it is. We're invoking this death delay. Now the problem is we're invoking this death delay, which does work. Well, actually, let me take you through the process. First, I use some print statements here to check if this was actually getting called. I put print starting death delay and print ending death delay. And if you noticed right now, it wasn't working because you didn't see those print statements in the console. And that was my first indication that the invoke was not getting called. And this is debugging with print statements. So I went back up here and then I noticed we're destroying the game object before we're invoking. So basically, we're destroying the game object and everything attached to it, including the script. So basically, as soon as this is destroyed, this invoke is not getting called because this entire script no longer exists at that moment. So a very simple way of fixing this is instead of destroying the player, we're going to instead do this line of code. We're going to say game object, which refers to this object, dot set active false. And the, visually, this will look the exact same. However, uh, from a technical standpoint, this won't actually deact. This won't destroy the game object. All it will do is, if we click on a player, it will take this little checkbox up here and turn it off. And if we do that, uh, the, the game object still exists. The sprite, the script can still be read, but the player disappears in the scene. So now, if we go ahead and test that out and let ourselves die, which I'm very, very good at, if you haven't noticed, uh, our ship gets destroyed, but we go on to the loose screen after. So that's a very quick and simple fix for that. And actually, uh, in a uh, manner of keeping myself all well and good here, I am going to get rid of these debug statements because I don't need them anymore. I know it's working. Okay, cool. Next, uh, let's see. Okay, level up particles were not self-destructing. That was relatively simple. Uh, when the player levels up, we just hadn't added the self-destruct script, or I hadn't added, maybe you did. But in the uh, prefabs folder, the level up particles, I just attached the self-destruct script and then they destroy themselves in the hierarchy. So that's all well and good. Next, 
canvas is not scaling correctly. So I've already fixed this on my end, but if you notice, if you double click on your canvas in the hierarchy, and then if you adjust your screen size, you'll, you'll notice that the items in there probably don't scale like they're doing on my screen. And you'll, in the Udemy course, you'll go over this a lot more and it'll lot, make more sense. But what you can do in the meantime is just change here on the right side where it says Canvas Scalar Script from constant pixel size to scale with screen size. And then you can change the screen match mode to either expand or shrink. I have it on expand right now. Oops. And I changed it to shrink just to see how it would look. I don't like how that looks, so I'm going to put it back on expand. You might have to readjust some of the elements, uh, but generally that will make it look a little better. And I, I haven't got it perfect here, but I'm not too concerned. Uh, but you might want to play around with it a bit and just see if you can get it to look good depending on what your screen size is. Next. I want to make killing enemies feel a little more organic. It felt a little too static and controlled as is. So all I did for this was I adjusted the score to be a bit random. So if you notice, I'm not getting a flat 150 points when I'm killing enemies. I'm now getting uh, a value between 125 and 175. Now I'm not going to show you how to do that. If you can know how to do that yourself, great. Uh, that's actually very, very simple to implement. So I encourage you just to figure that one out on your own. And the last thing was uh, oops, to add extra sound effects and animations. Uh, I, if you've noticed when I've been playing through here, you might have seen that my enemy ships are moving and the player ship also tilts left and right when I move. So that's playing around with the animator a little bit. And there's more I could do. I could make the, the enemy ships bounce back when they get hit or flash red. But I just wanted them to be moving a little bit more than they already were, just to make it feel a little more alive, slightly better. And the, it, adding some base, very basic animations does that. Uh, it accomplishes it quite well. So if you notice, there we go, that was my first level up, so I also adjusted those values. Uh, I, I did it in the way that seems good for me. Again, you can try to figure out a different way that seems good for you. I'd love to hear what you've done, if you've implemented these, if you found any other bugs, if you need help otherwise, if you're having any other problems. I'd just share, leave a comment, let me know how you're coming along at this point. Uh, and share your work with other people too. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you in the next video.